Sure. So the first presentation is Med Ulasted, mm -hmm. and the stage is yours. Should we just start by giving her a hand? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for uh, showing up, and mm -hmm. I have been looking forward to uh, to talk with you, to you. Uh, actually, I planned the, the the workshop here or the little speech in uh, in Danish because my two books in Danish, but I hear some of you are speaking English, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we will do it in English, but. The stuff here, the material here, is in Danish, so I hope you can like kind of deal with it. But um, and it is uh, this is this is a little speech about uh, a, a set of a set of uh, tools, a set of a set of um, of uh, ways to work with students and participants in innovation workshops. I'm a facilitator, so I work with a lot of different organizations, uh, also students sometimes, but mostly organizations. Earlier, I used to teach entrepreneurship and and. Uh, try to, to develop this whole entrepreneurial area in University College Lillebelt. But now I'm independent facilitator, so I'm hired by companies when they need um, somebody to facilitate, often it's their employees, in order to change something. Okay, well, we're gonna change the way we do our key service, the way we communicate, the way we organize or whatever. Whenever you have to change yourself, it's a lot difficult, and you have to. <laughs> sometimes you have to either have someone from the external area to kind of uh, say, "We're not going to talk about that," or "That we're going to talk about this," or you're going to have somebody to make you uh, think out of the box, or at least on the side of the box. So that's my position. So and from there, from being a facilitator, I often stand in workshops going like, "Oh shit, it doesn't work the way I thought it would. It is not going to work. They're not doing it. I have to invent some kind of new tool." And this is what I stole, what I invented, what I read, what I heard about, what I tried. Uh, a lot of it is what I, I invented on the road going on and I collected it. Um, so now there's 110 tools for working with groups, larger and smaller groups. And this is what I'm going to talk about. And it is in Danish. But three days ago I got an email from... I got an email First, I thought it was uh, like spam mail. It said blah blah blah. The UN staff college something. I was going yeah yeah. Nobody told me UN is going to write me. But then I, I read it before I like put it in my spam uh, <laughs> folder, and it says yeah we think your toolbox is so interesting. This is the UN blah blah blah. We got we're doing every um, uh, we're doing education for all the leaders in the UN. And I was like <laughs> okay. And she's like, well, is your toolbox translated into English? No, but it's coming. <laughs> so it'll be in, uh, in English soon, I think. So um, <laughs> when I discussed further on with this UN, yeah, it's still a bit surrealistic. So <laughs> now it's in Danish, but maybe in a year or so. And I was like, okay, how fast can we actually translate and produce a toolbox in English? Fast, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> so this is like a quick brief through what is a toolbox? Uh, how did I... I'm not going deep into it, it's not going to be sales speak, but how did I try to like organize all this fluffy work on developing something, changing something, making innovation processes, going from we have this idea, we actually do it. How do I kind of facilitate and organize these processes? Because that's really difficult. Because people do not do what you say. You have to like give them some kind of task in order to make them work in the best possible way. You know that when you have group work, you go out and discuss these three, three questions, and when they come back, they didn't discuss that, they discussed everything else. So I kind of invented a lot of tools, and also I stole a lot, and a lot of them you know already, um, and put them into the toolbox so that you can help, you can use this as, as a way to organize work in larger and small groups. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. And this way, I think it's, it's similar to what you do, I imagine, because you probably teach entrepreneurs in a wrong way and have groups work or have individuals work in some way, which is a bit different than the traditional academic way of working. Um, this is the tools. I tried to write it as simple as down to earth, so it says like, okay, how long time does it take, how many participants, what your material, and this is what it's used for, and here's the effect of it. And you can, I, I brought some uh, tools with you, and the small envelopes here are like a little, um, a, a little sample for your interview, you can have, if you want to. And there are one more toolbox up here, and you can have the, the table where you are the most people. Or down in the So, either you can say, oh, no, I'm going to buy that toolbox, that would be okay for me. 
But you can also say, okay, I think we should make kind of a, a toolbox of our own, or what, how can we get inspired by all this, the way she tried to kind of organize it. Um, so actually, this is from helping my clients not buying me, but being able to do it themselves. This is helpful for the facilitator. So I tried to uh, make them as, as down to earth as possible. Uh, I, I had a lot of different categories. These dogmas, dogmas, are kind of the, the ground rules, my ground rules on facilitating. And here are your opening tools, working with the subject tools, and closing tools. So I, um, my, my, um, my, like my basic understanding of an entrepreneurial processes is like it's, it's always closing and opening processes, and you probably work with that as well. So here's, this is what I, it, it, this is my background, this is my backbone, that's what it looks like for me. So you have, we have to find a common focus, then we have to like ideate how could we lose, or how could we, how could we solve this problem. Here you have to find your, your problem, some kind of, and find a common understanding of that problem. If this doesn't work, we'll find a lot of different solutions, because we don't, we do not agree on what's the problem actually. Here, here we ideate, a uh, find like, 30, uh, 50, 100 ways of solving this problem. Here you screen, you select the best, three, ten, five ideas. Here you develop these ideas further on, so you can see, okay, would it work? Here you've got ideas that maybe they're illegal, they are much too expensive, they would not work, uh, the map is not ready for it, and so on. But if we could kind of develop them, they would be really cool. So you'd, you pick out the ones you think, okay, they've got some potential, and here you develop them on, and here you choose the final one, and here you implement or uh, put it into business. So this is a very simple, oh, because in real life, it, I mean, it, it's, it's not like this in real life. In real life, it's really messy. You go like, do, 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 do. But in your mind, you have to some, have some kind of clarity, at least with your participant or with your students saying, okay, try not to discuss whether uh, it can be, um, it can fit into the machine, or it's too heavy for the floor, or is it too expensive to produce but discuss widely how many ideas and so on. So you have to help them stand in these processes. Um, in, you can also say it's like you have opening processes where you kind of uh, work with a lot of different alternatives, a lot of different perspectives of a problem, a lot of different ideas. And then you have something, in this is it's dealing with in Danish. I stole this um, way of selecting these three different words from another book in Denmark called Anakin the Processus, which is really cool and I loved and I stole a lot from them. I wrote it where I stole it, but <laughs> I did steal a lot. Uh, and they said, they, the, we have open processes, we have dealing with the problem, dealing with the solution, dealing with the subject, dealing with the dilemma, working our way into it. And then we have closing, meaning making a decision, sorting it out, choosing what to do. And, and that's what I uh, did uh, for like categorizing my tools. Because you have to make it simple in some way. So, my process is, we'll see, this is a closing process, here's an opening process, here you're working with it up here, dealing with it, closing again, opening up, working with it, I didn't cut, yeah, and then closing it again. And then you use the toolbox to kind of, when you plan your entrepreneurial process, when you plan your a workshop with participants, with a company, with students, you're like, okay, I have to get them started in some way. Yeah, we're going to work with that one. And then I put it out on my table, actually. Okay, and then, this is a starter, and they need to be, like, comfortable, safe, and feel good, like, know each other's names. And then we need to know what the subject is. Okay, we're going to work with what is the problem, actually. This is then a tool of a starter tool, and then a outclaring focus, that means get a coming understanding of what is the problem actually. And then this is knowledge sharing. And then I would go and find a tool for what category I need and put it up. And then while I plan, I go like, oh no, we can't do that first of that, we have to. And then I find another one going like, we can't ideate before we, and so on. So I get, like, I plan, I, I adjust my plan the whole way. And then in the end, I've got this like timeline, and I go and put the time on it. Okay, 9.30, 10 o'clock, da, 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 and then I see what's realistic. So I, work, I use it as, as, a, as a way of making my, my script for my, uh, my workshop. Sometimes I also just lose like, okay, I have these f uh, 50 people they are going to meet. I don't want to do the same shit I always do. What can I do? So it's like 
my mother used to have a, a, a recipe book, a recipe box like this in the mm -hmm. 70s. It was like, okay, you've got meat, uh, loaf, you've got egg, uh, recipes, blah, blah, blah. It was like very, very orange, uh, really hot in the 70s. <laughs> and that's, that's more or less it. So it's a recipe book and you can like put up your timeline for what you want to do. I think you can also ask the students to do the same thing. Because that's also a problem the whole time. We need the students to be able to plan their own process because you cannot facilitate them the whole time. So for that, I... Oh yeah, I'm just going to run through. Opening, opening tools is like status breakers, finding a common understanding of what is our problem action, sharing knowledge and then ideation. That will be your opening tools, in my opinion. And then you've got that dealing with tools and that qualifying and developing this idea that we got. It could also mean qualifying and developing our understanding of what the problem or the dilemma is actually. Uh, then you got some uh, overview and selecting tools, and then you got, I, it's, it doesn't really fit there, but it's, it's for involving large groups of people for conferences, because I have a lot of jobs doing conferences, and it's always really dull. Well, this is not, because you actually did some playing, but I mean, you're probably into conferences where you've been sitting for eight hours, yeah? So here's some tools for how can you involve conference participants. Much needed, I think, actually. And then some closing tool, which is evaluation and um, uh, oh, some making uh, summarize. Thank you. <laughs> and planning. Okay, planning. So we got this idea. What are we gonna do? And then tools for presentation for a large group of people, so that you don't have to sit there and just listen to a lot of presentations all in a row. So this is the the like. These are the tools. Um, a lot of them. I just a little hit. I went to a. I don't. I don't get time to do all this stuff to write on these tools in the daily life. So I took off three weeks in Thailand. Went to a little island. There was no internet, and it was fantastic. So I was sitting there at my little cottage, looking at sea, and I didn't have no internet, no Facebook. And there you can write like hundred tools, but you wouldn't be. Able, I wouldn't be able to do it in in daily work life. So you talk with your. Uh, yeah, you come here about that. I did this for uh, an education in S yeah, a Danish education uh, recently, where we have to make some kind of tool for helping the students plan their own process and also helping their um, uh, supervisors. supervisors. Yeah, both in the education, but also when they're out in the practice field, they are working with the healthcare, so they have to go out there, and these supervisors out there also have to be able to supervise them in an entrepreneurial way, and they're like. Okay, what's that? They, I mean, they they don't know it yet. So we kind of we worked out this tool. You can see the same thing: finding focus. We added an extra phase, though. So this is finding focus. I think this is the problem. Okay, researching. Is it really the problem, or is it just me? So here, you research, research, research. What is the problem? Con in, from our from our users and clients' point of view. So a lot of different uh, design thinking tools here. Analyzing your research. Okay, what is what is the problem now? How how what's the problem actually? This is what was my like um, was my understanding of the problem before I began to research. And here I've done some research, so what does the problem seem to be now? So here you ideate, here you screen, you take the best five out of the out of the ideas on how to solve this specific problem. That is taken from your uh, field, your professional field. Uh, here you develop on to these five, and here you pick the one you think is the best one, or your boss does it, or the company you're doing it for, or the problem owner does it. And here you make a plan for implementation. These students, they are probably not able to implement it, but they can make maybe a pilot, or maybe a plan for implementation. And this, we kind of designed it, so this is an A3 sheet, and they've got a, eight of them. And the students, like, they take this together, so this is their like process plan, and they bring it with them to, uh, to the supervisor, both in the educational area and also in the profession. Uh, and there, then they have like little, little, um, little tools. Online we've got like a tool uh, catalog, which could be these, but uh, like we pick 10 or 20 out of them, rewrite them a bit, and then we kind of have a, uh, an online 
uh, tool catalog where they print out all the tools and then take what they want. So they also put tools up here and when they have to ideate they also put posters up here. So it's both a process plan where they say, okay, I'm going to work with that research tool and that research tool. They print it out, hang it up, and they also like make their deliverance, make their their understanding, make their research uh, data and stuff like that up here. And then they summarize, okay, here, so what is it about? What is the analysis about? What is the problem about? And they, they ideate and make some tools for ideation. So it's a way of like, uh, helping the students and their supervisors to, to both have an overview and um, to, to pick the tools that are, that are best for them in each phase. Because in my opinion, when, when you work with innovation, when you work of, with developing something new in a specific area, the whole process like, is really loose, it's chaotic. Uh, the most common way would be like, okay, I think we've got a problem. I know who we're going to call. Okay, we're going to call. Who's going to call them? We're going to fix that. And you won't, I mean, that would be the, the most well-known idea or method for, for dealing with that problem. You won't see all the other ways of dealing with that problem. You won't have any innovation, you won't have any development. You would do like your supervisor would have done like 20 years ago also. So if you have to find some new ways of solving, let's say, social welfare stuff, uh, problems, you have to work through these phases. And then that's chaotic. I mean, the students will get really confused. So in order to help them in this process, when, when uh, all the content is really chaotic, you need to be really tight on the process. And that's a way of being really tight on it. So you can say, yeah, I know it's chaotic right now, but on Tuesday at 4 o'clock, we know which five ideas we're going to work with. So you have to stay in this chaos, but just for three days. And they've got, okay, okay, I can handle that, I can handle that, most of that. Yeah. I also did <coughs> a little thing on, on graphic facilitation because I think this works so well uh, also for, for designing tools for the students that would um, help them work in a specific way. So I did a lot of graphic templates and a lot of graphic like task actually or tools for them. Yeah, and I'm not gonna go through that. I think yeah. I think I'm not gonna say anymore. I think you should ask some questions because I might not might be talking in a different direction than what you're in. So say something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ask <laughs> hmm? Do I have to take a course to use the toolbox or could could I just use it? You, yeah. If you know a bit about entrepreneurship or facilitating you can just use it. I, oh yeah, I did, what I did was I have a Facebook page and on that I have a lot of like, this is my favorite uh, startup, blah, blah, blah. And then I've got a, a video on one minute saying, la, 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 this is how we do it. And you can, I mean, you can just grab that. Um, I did like 25 small videos of my favorite tools and kind of explain that. I think you can use it just from that. When you know a bit, a bit about facilitating. But you can also come to like a three, two hours this is how you use it. Yeah. Other things. But how does it how does it fit into your world? I mean, does it? Do you have the same problem about facilities and structuring these processes not being there? I mean, all the time when I see, okay, we're in group work, we go out to different group rooms. I go like, okay, I hope it's gonna work. And that's why I designed all these tubes. Yeah. Well, I think it fits very well into our, we have like a three week process mm -hmm. where we go exactly through these yeah. things and it, it's always uh, all new facilitators coming in and they don't have a toolbox and well if I've been there for like uh, three, four times I have a, a small toolbox so I'm picking the same things that I know so I think this is a good uh, wide toolbox so I think it fits very well into what we mm -hmm. do. I think I would like to know the price of the box. You would like to know the price of the box. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Is yeah. that so? Yeah, it's uh Oh I can see the But yeah, but it's also in Danish. Yeah. Okay. But it this it's um, plus months and that's yeah, tax. Tax, yeah, that's twenty five percent. And that's in Danish craft. I'll I'll uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Something like that. But it's also uh, And that's for fifty tools. And then you, yeah, for fifty tools, and then you get you you buy a year's uh, abonnement. What's that called? Yeah. Abonnement. Yeah. The subscription, something. And I keep on sending you 
tools because I mean you cannot cope with 10 tools and with 100 tools you can like maximum cope with 50 and then I send you some more each year three times a year but they are also on uh, the digital form or no no because actually I I, I have all these like there's a lot of like um, databases where you can find digitally tools but I seem not to use myself it's like oh, I am mm -hmm. stuck there, and I don't even like open my books. So, but this works for me because it's on my desk, and I go like, okay. Yeah, so it's appealing for me, and I, I'm really, uh, I'm full up with with digital stuff that I don't really see because it's not appealing to me. So I need to do like that. Also, when I'm really, big, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that one. That's my plan B. Okay, <laughs> and then I run out. So I use it also as a plan B. If everything goes wrong, I've got my plan B in my bag. I, I worked with um, I worked with an education that did this, and they had like these big um, uh walls made of like stiff paper, and it was like three meters long, and they did it like a process wall. So each group of students had their own wall, and they were working just beside that wall, and they were putting like all their tools, and all their post-it notes, all their findings, all their and that was their tool, or their, their, that was their process wall. And of course it was conflicting with the uh, aim that they want to digitize everything, but it really worked for the student because, because this was also their room then. They had the group table and stuff and their coffee, and this was their process. With tools and books and notes and fine things and pictures and all. Yeah. The next I mean, big project would be to collect all our tools from this area, the entrepreneurial area, be able to make your common toolbox. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Yeah. I think I'm done. Yeah. Any additional questions? Okay. If you if you like uh, go, uh, I like your page. I would write you when I, I translate this into English because it's the yeah. UN language. Yeah, we gotta buy that. And then I'll definitely translate it. Because now it's only days. But if you like sign up for that, I'll sure, be sure to write it like really big letters. Yeah. <laughs> I only know who I would work with. I found my I found an, like an American facilitator, American Dutch facilitator, who is like native English speaking, who would translate for me. But we haven't started yet because I don't know how to sell it actually, and I don't want to put any more money in producing something that I don't know how to sell. So I need to find my distribution and my... Yeah, so I'm working with this area right now. Eh? <laughs> Make the UN thing. Yeah, I'll yeah. definitely work on that one. We've got a Skype meeting next week. Yeah. Coming up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah?